Welcome back to Leading Edge. I'm Jerry Anderson. Last week on Leading Edge, I hope you were here, the chairs of both major political parties in Lucas County joined me and both voiced strong opinions that the four members of Toledo City Council accused by the feds of taking bribes should resign their positions. The president of City Council, Matt Cherry, agrees resignations are in order and he joins me here on Leading Edge. Councilman, good to have you along. Um, so, so council convenes a special session this past week. Three of the four show up. I mean, you're doing this all virtually, I'm sure, but three of the four log on. They're there. You ask them to leave. They do not. You adjourn the meeting. Why? Um, well, <clears throat> as you know, my office of the president of city council has asked the four of them to resign. Um, they obviously have not done that yet. And um, I can tell you that, you know, we've been getting a lot of phone calls and communications from constituents about how uh, they should not be on council and their vote should not count. Um, and they don't feel right that it's they're, they're, that they're voting on city issues um, while being under investigation. So um, with that, I needed a little bit more time for my law department to research ways that maybe um, we could possibly remove them and we're still working on that. So. Um, I, Although there is very important city business on both dockets that we're looking at right now. In fact, um, at that meeting, Matt Cherry, uh, important issues out there before this council, everything from police reform, subpoena power for citizens review, to mandatory masks in the pandemic. Are you not, though, empowering these members, accused bribe takers, empowering them to bring the work of council to a halt if they just show up? I mean, I, I guess you could possibly look at it that way. But, um, you know, I can say the majority of my members, the, the eight of us that are not under investigation, uh, did not want to vote with the council members that day and didn't feel comfortable doing it. And I, I know there's stuff on here that needs to get done ASAP. So hopefully we'll have more answers uh, by our next meeting next week. Uh, we'll move on to some other stuff because there's so much important stuff out there in these uh, terribly tough times in our city, in our state, in our country. Uh, these members, I'm going to go ahead and mention Larry Sykes, Gary Johnson, Yvonne Harper, Tyrone Riley are, as we speak, innocent. Correct. They remain that way until proven otherwise. So how do you wrestle? I mean, do we punish still innocent people in our society? Well, I mean, I, I think that what the, the, the public's view on them after you know, seeing the documents that are out there are that they don't want them um, voting for city business on their behalf. I mean, they, they've elected them to be uh, respectful and mindful and, and do their due diligence. And I just think the majority of Toledoans right now don't think that they can do that uh, comfortably and, and respectively. So um, although they are definitely innocent until proven guilty in a court of law, but public perspective, public perception of them yeah. um, is a little bit different. Yeah. Could you hold meetings and then maybe not a call on these members to vote? Therefore, they stay up on issues. They know the debate. They don't have a voice. And I definitely gave them that option on Tuesday. Okay. You know, if they were not going to resign, I asked them to pay the respect to the eight of us to leave the meeting and let us handle the city business, the eight of us for now. Mm -hmm. And they declined to leave. Uh, okay, Let, let's do some issues before city council. That thing is pending. You guys are going back into session this coming week. Is that right, Tuesday? All right. So we'll be watching to see how that whole three, four other members of council play out. Among the thornier, thornier issues is Matt Cherry, as you know, president of the city council. Should citizens review board, should a citizens review board in investigating cases involving police conduct have subpoena power? What do you say? I personally don't agree that they should, um, at least with the current board and makeup. Um, you know, I think what we need to really do with all these police matters at this point in time is, you know, the mayor announced through a press conference the, um, I, I, don't, I don't know if it's necessarily called the, the task force or what the specific name of it is, but it's 25, I believe, non-political people. Um, that will be on this on this review committee task force. Again, I don't know the exact name, but I think those people need to um, review all these pieces of legislation and then come back to us with a recommendation. Right. Um, here's a here, here's one. Have fun with this, sir. Given the surge in coronavirus cases, 
should masks be mandatory for everyone when they are in places open to the public? I haven't made up my mind, Jerry, about how I would vote on this matter yet, but I can say I personally um, try to wear a mask everywhere I go, and I wish more people would, I guess. So that's definitely heavily weighing on me. Um, but sometimes, you know, in the other in the other aspect of it, you know, that uh, waitress at the restaurant doesn't need to be the mask police either. Yeah. So it's making their jobs really tough. I know people that are in the industry and, you know, they feel that you should wear that mask, at least most of them, to protect them right. in, in passing and things of that nature at the grocery store. But again, uh, you know, I know a person that works at a, at a local retail store and I was talking with him about this very issue. And, you know, at first, a lot of people were wearing the mask and doing a good job, but then they, they, they kind of went off a little bit. And he goes, Matt, I'm just, I'm tired of being the mask police and having people yeah. disrespect me, I guess. Yeah. Well, it, it's hard to put them in that kind of thing. It does put, i tell you what, I think if you'd had a policy from the get-go, and I know it's, who could have seen any of this, Matt, Jerry? I mean, uh, I, I'm old enough to be your dad. I've never lived through anything like this. But I'm I mean, at, at, you want to go into Costco? Guess what? I don't even think about it unless you have a mask before you go in. It's, it's just understood, and you don't get in if you don't have one. Um, even, even still with that, Jerry, and, and I, I've noticed, you know, people going in with masks and then taking them off. Yeah. And, you know, I, I don't get it, but again, you can't expect those employees yeah. to be the mask police. Yeah, I, I'm with you on that. What's the latest on the city budget so depleted by COVID-19, the virus? Um, I'm, we're still waiting on an update, but I do have a uh, council um, in Delaney and Councilwoman Moline who are on my budget, budget task force. They are daily uh, keeping a track on it. Um, so we should be having a meeting coming up here soon to see what the damages are. I couldn't give you a, a number today, I'm sorry. Well, we know in the wake of furloughs and layoffs by the city after a hiring freeze was imposed, this is going back to springtime, the city this spring still found a way to hire some five pretty well-paid employees, salary total $330,000, can push forward spending $10 million plus dollars on Summit Street improvements, many of which, it's gonna look cool, but I mean, kind of cosmetic and is actually considering spending a hundred grand on an executive director for the city review board. Where's the austerity, Matt? Well, you know, with the Summit Street project, we do have the Solheim Cup coming here next year, and we plan to have many, many, many uh, people from other uh, parts of the world here visiting us. So we definitely want our Summit Street to look beautiful because that's where most of the people will be staying. And, you know, you want people to come back to Toledo and say what a great city we were. We also have provided a ton of jobs with that project wow. um, as far as construction workers that, you know, also, you know, need work at this time as well. Um, you know, the $100,000 on the executive director of, you said it's the police review board, correct? Well, that's what it is, right? Or is yeah. it for this yeah. task force? It's, that's not set in stone yet. I mean, that's still... Um, in the works, so. Um, hey, I'm retired, man, I have time. I'll do it for half the money. <laughs> but, you know, we still have to, I, I get it, and I know what, what the perception may look like, but, you know, the administration and city council still have to keep this city moving forward through a pandemic or not. Let's do this. In the spring, council was cobbling together funds for a new police class, albeit a scaled down one, maybe 25 members versus the usual 40. And that, we're told, would just fill a void expected from retirements. Is that gonna happen? Yeah, as far as I know, we're still moving forward with that. All right. And since we're at police, you bring it full circle from earlier in the program. Just quick thoughts from the president of council, uh, a, a local guy, a resident who um, ha has some experience with the Toledo Police Department within family. Um, your thoughts, your reaction to the tragedy of um, a week ago. My, uh, my thoughts and prayers go out to the Dia family. Um, I did attend the funeral on Tuesday and uh, it, it just takes you back. It, it's very humbling and um, just can't be more proud, prouder of him for his service to our community. Uh, like I said, my mother was on the police force for many, many years and retired now. And um, I just can't imagine what they go through every day. They are, uh, they are amazing. Uh, that's a case where when you say the word hero, you can say it quite literally and mean it from your heart. Matt Cherry, uh, stay well, my friend. Thank you for keeping us uh, updated on what's happening down at City Hall. My thanks to Matt. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks for having me, buddy.
keeping us on the leading edge of what's happening at City Hall and pushing forward when a full third of council faces federal bribery and extortion charges. We'll keep you posted and I'll be right back.